Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Nashville Stars franchise. The Stars, through the first 41 games of the season, are 20 and 21. I think we're doing actually pretty well. I think we're more or less finding our identity now going forward in this organization, and maybe pitching is the one. We are first in the MLB in ERA. We are in the bottom half as far as on base percentage goes and in the middle of the pack with average. Isn't it amazing how the Yankees just find a way? Brian Reynolds is leading the AL in batting average and I cannot believe it. They traded Jason Dominguez who was their top prospect at the time and they ended up acquiring him and along with Jonathan India. They ended up getting both of them so the Yankees still stay competitive. And we finished last in the division the last couple of seasons, so we're definitely looking to compete with these top squads, so we will start to highlight series more against them in our division. Now, looking at how our players are developing, though, you know, the one guy that is really the X factor, I think, in this season is Kendrick Franklin Cole. If he can get his bat going, I think that would kind of maybe not fix our on-base percentage uh, issues, but at least it will help them. I kind of thought that Victor Robles would be the guy when we started this series. He would be the guy that we eventually build this entire organization around, but he's just disappointing. And AAA is even hitting 214, 313 on base percentage. And I've just been really disappointed with his development. So I want to start developing KFC just a little bit more and fixing his swing. So what does that start with? Really finding a better stance for him. Now, his old stance used to be the Albert Pujols 2008, I believe. So we are just going to like try to fix his stance, fix his swing, because his attributes say that he's a good hitter. He does hit well in AAA, but why doesn't he hit well when he gets moved up? I think one thing is his stance. I think the second part of his swing is changing his swing from one-handed to two-handed. So we will go ahead and do that find him a good stance, find him a good fluid swinging motion, if you can call it that, um, and really, you know, fixing it. So I'm going to limit his movement with his bat waggle and let him swing with two hands. I think he will generate more power there because I think that's more of his issue. And you can just see with these newer updated uh, stance and highlights, he's hitting the ball a lot better. And this is what I imagine from him and even getting on base he has 80 stealing people forget that he's not just a good hitter he gets caught right here he's only got 60 speed but with 80 stealing he's gonna swipe some bags so uh we ended up finding a final batting stance for him as you can see with that swing right there kind of lower less bat waggle and he started to hit the ball a lot more solid well, good thing there's a guy up here that is really, you know, taking up that uh, void that KFC field of them. I'll be like, what's Dom Thompson Williams? He did a 307. He is on a tear. And he is kind of filling in for some injured guys as well in our lineup, like Tyson King, who was hurt, who was more of a depth guy this year, but still a big piece. James Caprellian had a broken forearm. He's back in two weeks. And then Jorge Alfaro was a good bat the last couple of years, but struggling this year out for two months. So he will be back probably around the trade deadline. So here we face the Tampa Bay Rays, a team that, you know, we are trying to compete with in this division. They have a lot of young pieces, and I don't think right now they are best suited to compete. Um, I think the Yankees right now are the best team in the division. They are sitting here at 24 and 26. We are more or less competing with them for that third or, or fourth place in the division right now. But we'll see. Our top three hitters are all hitting the ball well. You can just see it at the top of our lineup. Devers, Herrera, Doss, and Dom Thompson-Williams all hitting the ball well to start this season. Troy Quincy, we're going to see on the mound once again, a 116 whip. You can just see the improvement here in year number two. And he faces a tough Tampa Bay lineup, an up-and-coming young one. Wander Franco leads them off with the hit down the left field line. That one's fielded by Thompson Williams, thrown on to second. It will just be a long single there for the once top prospect in baseball. Taylor Walls comes to the play, hitting 281 on the year. He gets a hold of this one. Deep to right field. This one gets out. It's a home run. 
You don't see this often from Troy Quincy. He doesn't really give up too much of these type of hits. Early in games especially, 453 off of the bat of walls. It's 2-0 just like that. Randy Arazarena comes to the plate. He walks, bringing up Mike Z uh, Zanino to the plate, hitting below 200. But he gets a hold of one deep to right field as well. This one makes it into the water. It's a home run. 4 nothing here for the Tampa Bay Rays off of our ace in Quincy. Maybe the worst outing we've seen from him. 4 nothing, giving up two bombs to the Rays, and Zanino goes deep. And it's 4 nothing, and it's their seven-hole hitter up. Yandy Diaz, he grounds out two-third, though. We get out of this inning. And wow, what a first inning by the Rays. On to the bottom of the second. One guy I want to start evaluating more is Taylor Trammell. Remember, we traded for him in season one. He was down in the minors the entire season two. He's getting his shot at the majors once again here in season number three. John Dumont to the plate. We evaluated him a little bit last episode and kind of said, hey, should we pick up a veteran here? But I think I'm going to wait it out with John Dumont. I think sometimes his bat gets a little hot, and I want to kind of ride that wave. Kurt Zimbrato to the plate, filling in for Jorge Alfaro, who is hurt for the next two months, and he swings and misses at that one. 4 nothing game as Yanni Diaz comes to the plate once again with this time runners on the corners. And this was just going to be a ground ball to short, but with no outs, they're actually going to score another run. 5 nothing for the Tampa Bay Rays. Very unorthodox of Troy Quincy to give up five runs in a game. Rafael Devers comes up in the bottom of the fourth inning. Ryan Yarbrough got the start here for the Rays today. He walks now with one out, bringing up James Wood to the plate, and he's hitting the ball extremely, extremely well. Remember, he is a rookie. Kerry Doss is a rookie. The throw into the cutoff, man, actually overthrows the shortstop, and we will advance both runners to second and third, respectively. So now with one out, Taylor Trammell back at the plate. We said we wanted to evaluate him a little more. He hits one hard up the middle, and that one gets through. It will score one. It's going to possibly score two. The throw home is in time, but no tag applied on James Wood. Taylor Trammell comes through with the two RBI double. Surprisingly, in the fourth inning, they're going to pull Yarbrough and bring in Jeffrey Springs, another left-hander, to face John Dumont here with one out. He's one for one with a double today. This one is right over the middle of the plate. He cannot keep up. That one had some heat on it. Two outs, bringing up Zambrano. Two strikeouts out of the pen, and they will get out of that inning. On to the bottom of the fifth inning, bringing up Dom Thompson-Williams, hitting 300, just absolutely tearing the cover off the ball. He gets one inside. That one's going to be ball four. So we have a man on first base here with Kerry Doss, our top prospect coming into this season, and one of the best in baseball. He was the minor leaguer of the year last year. Inside pitch, this one will be called on the check swing. One-two pitch here, right over the middle of the plate. This one is lifted deep. It's going to be crushed over the stands in left field. It's a home run. That ball was absolutely tattooed. Kerry Doss showing off the muscle on that one. Just absolutely crushed. 5-16. Goodness. That's the potential you see with the bat with Kerry Doss. And he is the front runner for Rookie of the Year this year as well. We could possibly have two straight Rookie of the Years. Abdubo Herrera to the plate now, trying to follow that up, and he does! It's a home run to right field, tie ball game. Abdubo Herrera, who we signed to a two-year, $12 million deal. People thought we overpaid for him based off of a silver slugger season, but instead, he has proven the doubters wrong and tied this ball game up, and they will go to the pin, bring in Brooks Rally out of the pin, Appeared in 17 games this year, almost half of the games. He faces James Wood, who gets one over the middle of the plate. This one's driven deep to center field. It's going to be back at the track. It keeps going. Back to back to back. 
The Stars take the 6-5 lead in this game. What is going on? Our bats are coming to life. And I love it. We have power all over the lineup now. And that brings up Taylor Trammell, who is not short of power at all. He hits one hard to right, the right center, right center field, the right side of the field. It's knocked down, but Trammell with decent speed will beat that one out. John Dumont looking to continue this inning here. 3-2 pitch. It's inside in ball four. And now we have men on first and second. This inning is still going. Kurt Zambrano 0 for 2 today. Just a ground ball to third. But what an inning here for your stars. We end up taking the 1-0 lead. Troy Quincy still on the mound here for the Nashville Stars. And Mike Zanino back at the plate. He goes the opposite field away from the shift, and it ends up being a double here. And that could be the end of the day for Quincy. I thought with a one-run lead, he could probably protect it, but no, we got to bring in Joel Pyomps out of, the, out of the pen. He's appeared in almost half the games as well, 19. 4-5-5 five, five ERA. We'll see what he can do today. Steven Duggar at the plate now in that sixth spot. He gets enough wood on this one. Just gets over Herrera, who was playing short today. And Dom Thompson Williams comes up throwing. Easy. And that's going to be the third out of the inning. But Tampa Bay ties this ball game up. Joel Pyams continuing here in the top of the seventh inning with one out. This one's right over the middle. Carrying deep to center field. It gets over the head of James Wood. And Cooper Kinney starts out with a one-out double, bringing up Xavier Edwards to the plate now with a man on second base. This one will just be a liner, liner to James Wood in center. Two outs. Wander Franco back at the plate. He led off the game with a leadoff single, one for three today. The pitch right over the middle. It is going to be a sinker, 96 mile an hour, carrying deep to right field, and it just sneaks over the wall. It's a home run. That one hit off of the top of the wall. Somehow got out. Only 88 mile per hour exit velo, 40 or 403. And Tampa Bay takes the two run lead. Austin Pruitt in the pitch here for your Nashville Stars with a two run deficit. Just trying to get us through the last few innings. And he, be uh, and he uh, beans uh, walls on that one. Bringing up Randy Arazarena to the plate. A slow chopper to third base. Devers comes up throwing. That's a good throw. We do get out of the seventh. No damage done besides that Wander Franco home run. Bringing in the eighth inning. Steven Duggar at the play with the man on third base. He comes through again. Nine to six here as Austin Pruitt gives up an RBI single on that one. But now into more trouble. Here's Cooper Kinney to the plate now. Deep fly ball, but James Wood runs that one down. And now we move on to the top of the ninth. Cody Stajic into pitch now. And this one will be a hit to the left side with runners on second and third. It will score two. And it's an 11-6 game for Tampa Bay. They're hitting the ball well today, but we're not done. We bring in Robert Suzuki into relief. And it gets worse. Yanni Diaz at the play with bases loaded. He hits a blooper to left field. It gets down. It scores two more. It is 13 to 6. So Tampa Bay brings their sticks here to Nashville. As we try to come back here in the ninth inning, it's not going to do nothing. Rafael Devers swings and misses at that one. 13 to 6 victory here for the Rays. And I thought it was going to be a very good comeback here for the Stars. Ends up being a blowout the other way. They get 15 hits in this game. James Wood goes two for four for them. Wander Franco and Mike Zanino both go three for five. So getting through the month of May, we just are sticking around 500 here. Even being 500 this season would be a huge improvement, but you know, you always want to shoot for the playoffs when you're competing. I think our rebuild is getting to a point where we are continuously rebuilding, but we still want to compete now. It's out of the official, just bottom of the dumps rebuilding. And now we look at the divisional games as really pivotal games in the season. And this series right here facing Boston at the end of the month of May is a big one. We right now have the two to one series lead. It will be great to win three of four versus them on the road. 
But now we go into extras here in the bottom of the 12th inning. Boston has a chance to walk it off with two outs. Joel Payams on the mound again, facing Victor Reyes. One, two pitch. This one is outside. Now bringing it to two and two pitch outside. And Victor Reyes is a little early on it. A slow roller to second. And John Dumont with the throw to first. And this one's headed to the 13th inning. On to the top of the 13th. The Stars start with a runner on second base. And that one will be a swinging miss by Zambrano. We have just not gotten going with him. Dom Thompson-Williams to the plate. Three for five today. And he just absolutely swings at a terrible pitch. Two outs. Abdul Herrera. He gets one over the left side of the plate, the outside of the plate. And that one will be a just a fly out. So we had a guy on second base there with no outs and nothing doing. On to the top of the 14th. Kerry Doss at the plate. He hits a chopper to third. This one's going to be an easy play for Xander Bogarts now playing third base for the Red Sox. On to the top of the 16th. Jesus Aguilar with a chance here to possibly give us a lead. He cannot. On to the top of the 17th inning. This is a long game here. John Dumont with a great swing on that one. But it's foul. 3-2 pitch. And it's just a ground ball to second base. And we're headed to the bottom of the 17th. Where we go to quick manage. And we give up a three-run home run. And the Red Sox will go on to win this game nine to six and it's going to split the seasons or not the season series but this series here at the end of the month of may i was really looking to win this game because i think making a statement in the, in the division is definitely definitely a big step for us but instead of going over 500 we go one game under 500 after that game so I wanted to highlight the game where Jack Leiter returns and plays against his former organization. I wouldn't say his former team because he never made it up to the major league level, but his former organization in the Texas Rangers. So we'll see what happens in this game. We are at home here, and Nashville took a 3-0 lead, and then Texas comes back, and they tie the ball game up. We have a big four, uh, fourth inning there. We score four runs in that one. End up going up 9-3 after five. But then Ryan Mountcastle comes back and gives them a big lift. Now, remember, Mountcastle used to play for us. He hits fifth in their lineup and is actually hitting very, very well. A lot of the players that we actually trade away end up going to other teams and actually destroying, which is very, very interesting. But here in the ninth inning, we are up by two runs, and we end up giving up a two-run home run, but do get out of this game with a win for Jack Leiter versus his former organization, he has a lot of strikeouts this year through 11 starts. He, he is averaging just under 10 strikeouts a start, but very, very good. Uh, pretty good month of May here. We do go kind of 500, but based on who we were playing and the opponents, we definitely showed up pretty well. So now we head into draft season, and this is where we will end our episode with the draft and we will see who will be our future prospects of the organization. One interesting note about our prospects here is that we don't have many uh, B potential prospects that are fielders. The only B potential prospect that is a fielder right at this moment is obviously KFC, but he is less of a prospect now and kind of a guy that we are still developing. So I guess maybe just a prospect. And then Enrique Bradfield, who we drafted last year in the second round, those two guys are only B potential guys. Everybody else is C or lower. So just very, very interesting. Lonnie Chisenhall is a C. He was a pretty good player we drafted last year, but he's got a lot of developing to do. Our pitching, we are a little bit better here. Our number one overall pick in season one, Stephen Brennan, is still developing. I'd say he's probably still one to two years away, to be honest with you. He's 19 years old, so he's very, very young. And then Zach Davis, who we drafted, I believe, in the third round last year. He's actually pretty decent at 20 years old to be 73 overall. He actually has that flame icon next to him, but I would think that he would be progressing a little better, but he's still 73. That's where he started. Bryce Jarvis, who we traded for at the trade deadline, he's 26 years old, B potential 72 overall. 
I thought he would be about a 75 right now, but he's still only just a 72. So we hop into the draft. The Oakland Athletics have the number one pick again. They are once again rebuilding for another year. I think this is their second straight year having the number one pick. And they end up with Phil Thomas, a third baseman. There are 10 blue chippers this year, which I'm very, very happy about. Because remember, last year there were only six. It was a very weak draft class. Now, with how I'm going to rename guys this season, uh, I am going to uh, not have the three real-life prospects like I usually do. You guys will have those top three high overall guys as well. One of you guys will be on the athletics. So here are our pickings here for the last of the blue chippers here at pick number six. Aaron Ojeda is a pretty good closing pitcher, but 2028 20, plus, I usually don't like to draft guys this far away. Brian Welch is also one of those guys. He is going to be a high potential guy, but like I said, that 2028 20, plus definitely like throws me the other way. There is Martin Franco, who I really like. He is 18 years old, a prep uh, pitcher out of California. He is a closing pitcher. So dra drafting a closing pitcher this early is something that we haven't done yet. But I like his potential a whole lot. He is 60 overall, 18 years old. So we will draft our second, or actually our third, actually I think two of three of our first round draft picks have been 18 year old pitchers. And the first was Steven Brennan. And now Martin Franco, welcome to the Nashville organization. He will be our first pick. So in the second round, we have some options here. Henry Escobar is another closing pitcher who looks to be ready pretty soon in 2025. So he will come in as a high overall. Stan Riley, I really, really like because he has big, big time potential with his bat. His power is at 80 potential, which is out of this world. Sean Moya is a option there. Another starting pitcher we could get, go after. I really want to go after a fielder here. And I think that Stan Riley is the option. He is a corner outfielder. I think that's where I'm going to st stick with him. He can play first base, but we have Kerry Doss, obviously, as a first baseman. So he will not be at that position at all. So we will go with Riley with that second pick. With our third round pick, we have a couple of options here. Frederick Ellis is still there, but so is Henry Escobar. Why not just load up on bullpen, guys? He is going to be excellent. His ETA is already next season, so he could be a pretty high overall player right away. In round four, I decide to just go after a boom or bust guy. I go after James Law. He is 80 potential, obviously 23 years old. What really intrigues me about some of these guys is that they have the hitting zones already red. So that kind of lets me know that they're going to develop pretty quickly as far as at the plate. So I will go after him. Like I said, that's more of a boomer bust pick. With our next selection, we have not a lot of guys that are accurate. So we're pretty much guessing at this point. And there are a couple of guys that caught my eye. We have a couple of guys that are scouted, but I want to just go after a guy that could potentially be a guy that can contribute quicker rather than having to develop. Ruben Wells is another position player I want to get. He can play corner outfield, so I will go ahead and draft him. And with the final pick, I just decided to go after the last 80 potential guy, Corey Sweeney. He's 19 years old, so maybe with that young age and that potential, he will turn into something. So let's look back at our picks this year. And Martin Franco looks like a very, very good prospect at 97 potential, 63 overall, 18 years old. I love this selection. I mean, he is everything you would want because even the walks per nine is at 69. That means he's going to be an excellent sim pitcher when he's ready. I'd say give him two years. Even when he's in the low 70s, he could be ready for the MLB just because of the walks per nine. Stan Riley ends up being the number two pick, and I love this pick. Look at the power on this guy already at 19 years old, 72 power, 67 power versus left. You give him two years, that power is going to be in the low 80s, I, I'm pretty sure. Henry Escobar ends up being very good also. Now, his walks per nine isn't as good as Franco, but still, hits per nine and case per nine are in the upper 70s. So that is excellent. 68 overall. Give him one full year in the minors. He could possibly be competing for a bullpen job. But then looking at our final three picks, this is where we kind of went, hey, boomer bust 
And James Law, definitely a bust. I'm not even sure I will sign him. Same with Ruben Wells. Deep potential, 58 overall. He's got excellent power, so maybe I'll resign him. But looking at James Law, I'm definitely not looking at him. He's 40-something overall. And then Corey Sweeney, also 44 overall. C potential. Not sure I will sign him. Let me know down in the comment section if I should sign these guys anyway. These guys will be renamed to you guys anyway, but it looks like they will be just lifelong minor leaguers. No, no impact at the MLB level whatsoever. So starting the month of June, we are over 500 now at 33 and 30 when we simmed to the draft. So we are actually sitting in a good position. How about our division here? Four of our five teams are in the top five spots for the AL wild card. That is wild if you think about it. Our division is absolutely killing it this year. So we do have some interesting, you know, players at the MLB level, some notes here going forward into the month of June and into the all-star break. Uh, James Caprellian should be uh, returning from injury. How about Eliezer Hernandez on a contract year? He is having a career year. That kind of tells me that, you know what? This could be the year that we say goodbye to Eliezer, not through trade, just letting his contract play out, then letting him walk because we have to reserve some money for Troy Quincy, for Jack Leiter, for Stephen Brennan when he gets a contract. We're going to have to reserve our funds for that. That's a big reason why I did not hit that cap of $70 million in free agency last year. I kind of hit 60, then I was like, well, I'll save that extra 10 just in case we got to extend somebody. John Dumont's doing better than he was at the start. Rafael Devers is having a great season. Shea Whitcomb is having a pretty good season. Kendrick Franklin Cole is hitting 272 at the AAA level. I'm happy to see his development. Abduba Herrera is hitting great right now. And then James Wood is hit, hitting well. And then Dom Thomas Williams, I don't need to say much more about him. He is absolutely surprising everybody, hitting about 306. I think the casualty here is Victor Robles, though. I'm definitely going to be looking to possibly deal him at the de at the deadline. Or I could keep him for depth. But right now, I think there are just other guys that are better. Maybe not as high overall, but just better. So going forward in this series, I want to make sure I'm not making a ton of trades. I think we're done with the trades to rebuild. I think now we're just pretty much building through the draft and then kind of just developing guys in the organization going forward so that's gonna do it here for this episode you know going into the month of june and july like i said it's probably gonna be like now just a one trade max each season especially in season because like i said the rebuilding is not done but getting the young guys is done and then drafting is gonna be the main way to develop guys now I look at some guys that are available via trade, and Aloy Jimenez is a big bat. Now, I would only trade for guys that are obviously on teams that are not contenders. I want to keep this realistic, so if the White Sox are doing well, I won't go after Aloy Jimenez, but he is definitely an option. There are some other guys here like Adam Frazier. He's decent, not hitting as well. David Bodie's down there as well, and there are a couple of other options, but not too many. So we'll see what happens here going into June and July, whether the Nashville Stars can really, really make a move here in the AL East and in the wild card. I am excited for the rest of the season. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you guys think of the draft. The top three picks I think are very, very good picks. But then the bottom three, should I resign those guys or just like let them walk and, you know, chalk it up as a loss? We'll see. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned, let's get it, let's go. Too easy, I've been there, done it, seen it, boy all that like Kenan, still got crack, they feeling, flow still hot like Phoenix, shine so bright I'm gleaming, this off top I'm tweaking, fresh out the rat like me, and I'm still trying to fight my demons, cause we all gotta act like Tino, that's why I gotta ride with the Nino, outside it's a war going.